I, I do a lot of simulation work, um, and you know, having spent time talking with Marcelo and, and, uh, and, uh, and install, install teams, mm -hmm. um, I've heard a lot about this software called Ease. Um, I, I have a, you know, a basic picture of what it might do, but could you tell me a little bit more about that and, and how you would design, say, DMLs into a space using that? Sure. Um, well, it's a, it's a very powerful design tool that's uh, used uh, extensively in sound system engineering. Mm -hmm. um, it allows you to create a, um, well, for a given loudspeaker, you create a set of data based on um, hopefully very accurately measured uh, set of polars. Oh, okay. So both in the vertical and the horizontal axis. This establishes the dispersion characteristics of a given device. Um, and you bring it into a modeling software where it takes the actual uh, space that you're dealing with into account. So you can you know, create architecturally the design of the space you're dealing with, a theater, or maybe you know, a, a sports center, basketball court, multifunction, multipurpose room, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, bring that element into that uh, three-dimensional space. Mm -hmm. And you can see the, uh, well, go as far as actually even building the walls, mm -hmm. um, creating a set of uh, data that gives you uh, insight into the intelligibility aspects, RTA times, that sort of thing. And, and the walls you get, um, you know, like the absorption coefficient for the yes, walls? Yes, you and can and actually yeah. bring in all the absorption coefficients for a, a given structure. Wow, okay. Uh, seating. Um, uh, so, you know, even kind of fiddle even with the absorption characteristics of humans in the room. Uh, water sex. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> um, I think you know, it's all very valid. I mean, one of the things that we've seen with DMLs is that um, no problem measuring frequency response, no problem measuring distortion characteristics, no problem measuring impulse, mm -hmm. no problem uh, actually delineating very, very uh, defined, very well defined, very high accuracy polars. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, one of the things that those sorts of programs and simulation programs uh, don't do very well is deal with diffuse right. sources. Okay. And the fact of how they react or how they react with the boundaries of, the, of a given room. Mm -hmm. Obviously, in the direct field, they'll, you know, they look very good. Uh, but if you really start looking at uh, how they're, they're calculating uh, RTA times, how they're cal calculating arrival times of reflections, mm -hmm. it doesn't take into account the way the DML actually puts energy into a given space. Right. right. So therefore, it might not look like uh, what we expect. It certainly mm -hmm. doesn't look like what we have experienced, where yeah. you, know, you stick the DML up in the air, uh, a rule of thumb that we're you know, constantly he's doing is, Let's stay in the, make sure the line of sight is very clear to the device that's operating, mm -hmm. and you get a fantastic result. Mm -hmm. You certainly get the result that you're not expecting uh, when you have highly reflective surfaces in a room. Right. Yeah. But um, uh, that's one of the downsides is how do we, you know, challenges for us going forward as an organization is going to be, you know, how do we integrate our data into some of those programs yep. where the program itself is creating a calculation based on how the device works. Like a phase coherent output, right. essentially. Exactly. Yep. Yep. So if you don't have that source, it's not going to have an accurate model of, right. and we know a predominant amount of the energy no, is because, not because, phase coherent. Because, yes, yep. and, and, and uh, um, uh, you know, those devices, those, uh, those programs, um, phase, uh, capturing the phase uh, content of that device is extremely important for those programs to actually work correctly. Right, yes. And, yeah. um, you know, you, and it's not so simple. I mean, even if you have a very sophisticated setup in your chamber or in, the, in your measuring space, um, you know, minimum you need probably 19 microphones right. that, are, that are not moving, not even a centimeter or a millimeter because you know that will have a huge impact on the phase measurement above 10k. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that'll give you bad data. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's a it's a tricky slippery slope. Mm -hmm. But uh, I still haven't seen you know the data that we've inputted into some of these programs certainly doesn't uh, reflect the the measured response in the room or perceived. 
Well, yeah, you know, you have to correlate what you perceive to a measurement. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it doesn't come close right now. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, direct field, no problem. Um, but in in uh, in uh, some of the simulations, yeah, it's a it's a bit of a challenge. Wow. Okay.